Hey folks, welcome back to Minute Rockets. Today we're continuing our series on building our own KNSB sugar motor, and today we're going to be looking at modeling the parts so that we can have drawings that we'll use out on the lathe. So here I'm modeling the fuel grain. I'm using a program called FreeCAD to do all the models. Um, it's a little bit buggy, but it's a free CAD software and it works well enough for what we're doing here. So you can see there I modeled the fuel grain. Um, that's the actual propellant that's going to go into our rocket. And then after that I'm modeling the casting tube that goes around it. I sped these up quite a bit. The whole process was about an hour and a half if I included all the videos and that's way too long for a channel called Minute Rockets so I uh, trimmed things down and sped things up so we can see the creation of the, the parts. So that was the fuel grain. Now we're looking at the forward closure. And you can see I just drew draw the profile there and then most of these parts are uh, axial symmetric so we just do a revolve procedure so we draw the the cross section and then we revolve that to make the 3D part. So here I'm dimensioning the the forward closer closure. So we've got the O-ring groove there and then the shoulder that holds the liner um, is that part there to the far right. And then we do our revolve and you can see there's the part. Um, and then on the top we're going to put our hole for our screw. This is a quarter twenty tapped hole um, that'll hold an eye bolt in the top there. So that's our forward closure. That's a, a a cut view where you can see the hole there in the middle. So we'll save that. And then right here I'm calculating the length of our liner. So the four fuel grains and then the shoulder on the line on the forward closure and the nozzle uh, to get the length of our liner, which I believe is just over nine inches. Um, so here I'm modeling the liner. And um, for a tube, it's just a rectangle that's then revolved around the axis to make a tube. Um, so I'm going to make our liner orange. There it is. Um, that's the liner that will go around the fuel grains. Now we're drawing our nozzle. And so you can see there again I just draw the profile of the nozzle and then we'll revolve that around the axis. Um, so pulling everything in here close to the dimensions we need and then dimensioning the o-ring groove there. That's where the o-ring will sit inside this nozzle. And then the shoulder there again for the liner, where the liner will go. And then our front. I played with this a little bit to get a distance that looked good. And then um, made our throat there. And so that's the the basic outline of our of our nozzle there. Then just getting things dimensioned to the angles and the distances that we wanted. Remember the main dimensions for our nozzle were the, the convergent angle and the divergent angle and then the exit diameter and the throat diameter so that's kind of what defines our nozzle so there's our nozzle all modeled up and now we'll start defining our case so again we'll just draw the basic profile that we're going to revolve to make our case you can see our two snap ring grooves and then our external groove for external ring and then we'll just dimension that up um, and put in our constraints to make everything orthogonal and aligned. So there's our first snap ring groove there on the aft end and then our forward snap ring to mention that up. And then uh, our external ring groove there was dimensioned. And then we'll put in our case thickness there. And you can see it kind of messed things up. I was saying FreeCAD is a little bit buggy. Sometimes it'll invert things when you add a constraint and do things like that. So you have to undo and Play some games to get it to to look the way you want it to. So we calculate our overall length by taking a half inch for each end closure plus the length of our liner which was nine and a half inches so our our distance between the two snap ring grooves inside the case is ten and a half inches and that'll give us clearance for both end closures and the liner. Um, so there we're just adding our overall length and then there's our modeled case. So now that we have our case modeled, we'll go ahead and start assembling everything. Uh, FreeCAD has an assembly module um, called A2 Plus that I'm using here. Um, so you just add your parts in and then you can add constraints to them. So you can see there I'm adding a fuel grain and then I just do a face-to-face -face constraint um, or a coplanar constraint to make one plane from one fuel grain planer with the plane with the front of the fuel grain behind it. And so we can line things up that way. And then there's a constraint on a 
circular surface where you can make them uh, coaxial and so that's how we line up most of this since most of our parts are round um, and then just moving our forward closure up a little bit to make it even with the liner so you can see all the internal parts of our case are there or our motor are there and then we just add our case uh, line that up with constraints to put it where it goes um, so that's great and so that's all the parts that we modeled and now we're going to add the snap rings and the o-rings the great thing about the parts that we're going to add here is that we're buying them from McMaster car so the o-rings and the snap rings and one, one thing I love about McMaster car is that they offer 3d drawings for almost all their parts and so we're just going to drop in here a model of the o-ring that we got straight from McMaster car and I'll try to put the link to all these parts in the description for McMaster car so you can go look at them and and see the 3d models that McMaster car provides they're really good detailed models of all the parts so now that we've got the two o-rings in we'll bring in our snap rings so here's the aft snap ring get it positioned in the snap ring groove there with a couple of constraints and then we'll bring in our forward snap ring there it is and get it constrained in its groove as well so once we have the two snap rings in we'll bring in our external thrust ring so this will go in the external groove on our case and the purpose of this ring is to bear against the back of the rocket this keeps the motor in position and keeps it from going up through the front of the rocket which is pretty important and then we'll put on our forged eye bolt which is also from McMaster this has a quarter 20 thread on it so it'll screw right into our forward closure and so now we have our case modeled and we get into the real meat of why we're doing this and that is to create the drawings for our parts um, we want to have a detailed drawing of each part so when we go out to the lathe and we start making chips that we can get the correct dimensions and um, not have to constantly you know figure on scratch paper what our dimensions should be and what our angles should be and those kinds of things this drawing is going to make things go so much easier out on the lathe so we're starting with our nozzle here you can see i brought in the nozzle um, this is a module called tech draw in FreeCAD, so you, it takes and makes drawings straight from your 3D models. So you can see we brought in that nozzle, we made a cross section of it, and now we're just dropping in our dimensions. Uh, we want to dimension everything that we can here, so we have a fully, fully dimensioned part when we go out to machine it. Um, that'll be critical to getting all our dimensions correct. And so we're putting in our angles, we're putting in our distances, both vertical and horizontal, and all our uh, diameters and that kind of thing um, and you'll see all these dimensions including the o-ring groove I'm putting in diameters um, that's because on the lathe it'll be easier to measure with calipers a diameter than say the depth of the o-ring groove I'd rather measure the diameter of the bottom of the groove than try to measure the depth and the outside diameter um, so now we're doing a similar thing with our front closure uh, we bring it in we have a three view there and then we'll do a cross section um, and throw that in there and then we'll start dimensioning that cross section in that way we'll have it fully dimensioned when we go out to to machine this part so there's the depth of our hole the diameter and then we'll put a little leader on it to just indicate that we're going to tap this quarter 20 and we're going to make it about three-eighths of an inch deep this is where our forged eye bolt will screw to the front of our motor and then our case so we're going to make a similar drawing for our case uh, drop our case in there and we'll do a two view of our case and then this one was a little bit tricky to fit everything on the page um, but we we're able to manage it so you make that a little smaller and then again we'll do a cross section and put that there and then uh, dimensioning the ends we do a detailed view so there's our two diameters um, which we're purchasing tube that's already those diameters so we don't have to worry too much about that and I'll try to put a link in the description to where you can get that tubing as well we're getting it from onlinemetals.com um, so we're going to do a detailed view of each end to get the dimensions of our grooves and um, you can see after I went in after I created the 3d model of the case I went in and added some chamfers um, that show up here in the drawing and so we'll just fully define the two grooves and our end profile right there um, and then we'll do the other end and we'll fully define that as well with another detailed view 
And then finally, we'll dimension the overall length of our case. And with that, we have a drawing for our case, and we have a drawing for all three of our machine parts, and we can use these to start machining our parts and creating our case. So we'll get started with making the physical parts in the next video. I'm really excited about seeing this motor come to life and building it, and I think this is a really fun project. I hope you do too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you'll be notified of all the future videos in this build series. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.